In this video, I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step guide to rebuild UTM.io all in Zapier and save about $1,600. You're not gonna to need to piece together a bunch of no-code tools. We can do it all in Zapier. We'll start from scratch. We'll build everything together. But real quick about me, I'm Bryce Vernon, and I've been using Zapier in businesses I've run or worked in, creating hundreds and hundreds of Zaps. I even created a course about Zapier in 2018. Zapier actually decided to hire me to do more of what I love, build with Zapier. I built out 100 templates in Zapier's template library, so I'm ready to break down what I've built with you today. Okay, first, if you're not familiar with UTM.io, basically, it's a link builder. That's really all it is. And you use these links that have all these different parameters so that when someone clicks on a link, you as a business can know exactly where it came from. So maybe it was some social post you put out, or maybe it's on your YouTube description, or maybe it's in an email. You need to track where people came from so that you know how effective your content is wherever you put it out in the world, right? If you wanna, if you wanna have people buy a product, you need to know that uh, maybe Facebook is the way people like to come in to the product. Maybe there's a, a specific post or maybe a specific video on YouTube that drove product sales. With UTM parameters, marketers are able to track this stuff. So it's super important to do. UTM.io simply makes it easy to organize all of those parameters and build out these links. That's literally all it is. We're gonna take a look inside UTM.io so you can see how this works, and then we'll build it all in Zapier. It won't even take that long because it's so simple. So inside UTM.io, the bulk of what you're seeing here is a table that has a bunch of different fields in it. You know, the person who created it, when it was created, the actual full URL that was built, the campaign name, the medium, source, term, all these other pieces here that you customize within UTM.io. So you have these links, when you cl click create link, this is where you type in your URL and then decide which of the parameters you wanna include, like source, is, it you is this link gonna go on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever, right? And once you fill this all out, you click copy and save and it will build out the URL for you. You take that URL, put it in your social post. And so on the surface, all this is is a form. This is a form. This is a table and the building of the links is a simple automated workflow. All those things can be built using Zapier. We'll get to that in a minute. So you see here the parameters, you decide which parameters to put in here. You can add more. And the same thing with attributes, very similar to parameters. There's just different pieces here that all go together to build out the link. And then here's where you could connect a link shortener, like Bitly, that's something we can do in Zapier too. There is something here too, which is rules. It's basically, hey, when you fill out the form, which fields are required? That's the main use of it. There's some other things like prohibited characters and other bits here to make sure the URL looks good. But that's it, that's utm.io. So now let's dive into how to build this in Zapier. Okay, so this utm.io template is something I've created for you. So you can go to zapier.com slash templates slash utm dash builder, and you'll get access to this exact template that's gonna serve as the main building block and the structure for building out your own replacement. So all you need to do here is click use template. Now it does use one zap, one table, and one interface. So you wanna make sure you have at least that much on the plan you're on. The free plans across the board allow for this, but if you've already been building with Zapier, then you just wanna make sure you have enough space. But once, once we do that, this gives you most of what you need. It's pretty simple. So there's this form here, right? You start with a website URL. You have a campaign ID, campaign source, the medium, the campaign name, term, content. You can add as much as you could possibly dream up to this form. Once you do that, all you're gonna do is click generate URL. When you click that button, it's gonna kick off a workflow. And we're gonna look at that workflow in a second and it will add the full 
website URL and everything built for you in the table below. And so we can see, and we'll step through each of these one by one so you can see how, to, how you'd figure it out or how you'd build it out for yourself. But again, there's the interface page, it's that builder. The table is the campaign URLs in the back, and then there's the zap to generate the links. So let's just start with that form. This is just a, an image that you can replace very easily with whatever you want, right? And here's text, easy enough to replace that. Then here's the form. So website URL, it's from a table that we'll see in a second. The type is URL, and it has everything here, including required field that you need if you wanna make sure that that's required, which you would, you would need the website URL for this to work. So that's how that's set up. So all these right out of the box are created as short text field from the table. But if we wanted this to be specific, like Google, YouTube, Twitter, and not have any room for error, then we'd actually wanna make this a dropdown. And so I'm gonna remove the campaign source field and show you how to how to do this. So we're gonna say campaign source, click drop down, um, and then a static list here. Now this can always change, but we'll put Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you know, you could say email, whatever else you wanna put in here. There's only gonna be one source, we'll say it's required, and we'll click create field. When we do that, it creates the field in the table. And so everything is connected within Zapier. We'll just move this up so you can see. And so when we go to select a campaign source, it will choose from a predefined list. And so we can see everything connected in this Zapier table. So we click view table. And if you didn't, if you didn't know, Zapier has this huge ecosystem now. You have Zaps, tables, interfaces, chatbots, Canvas, and more products coming. This makes it so easy to build stuff all in Zapier. It's simplified. You don't have to have a ton of subscriptions. You only pick and choose the critical apps that you think you need for your business to run. And all the operations, all the apps and tools that you might be paying for that could just be rebuilt in Zapier because they're just operations at their heart. That's what you want to think about and that's what you can rebuild in Zapier. So utm.io is a perfect example. All right, so you can see here the new field we added, campaign source. And so when we edit the field, you can see all those options were chosen from the form when we were building out the form. We can change up the, you know, the different colors. Maybe we want that green, Facebook's blue, etc. And then click save. And if you want to do this for any of the other pieces, that's that's all you would do. You would change these to um different drop downs and you would enter in all the drop downs or within Zapier you can create a linked record and so instead of monitoring all of the you know campaign sources from this like edit menu and you list them all out here we could and this might honestly be easier is go to linked record and then you create so this could be campaign source linked just for now I'll just say that and maybe you have a table, a separate table called campaign source. And in fact, let me go, I'm gonna build that real quick and, and then come back to show you. Okay, so I built out this table real quick. You can see it's a brand new table with one column that says sources, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You'd want to link to this table, probably only if you have some other information you wanna include with these sources. Just a static list, you're, you're better off just creating that drop down field. But with this, you know, you could add you know, date added, and now you've got this separate date added field. And you can have a bunch of other fields here. But more or less, this is what it looks like back in the other table. You would just choose the campaign sources table, and we'd show the source's name, click create. So now we have a separate table managing everything that could possibly show up here. And when you click, you can see all the options. So I could click Facebook, or you know whatever else is there. So again, you'd only wanna do that if you have a bunch of other things you'd wanna include alongside those sources like date added or maybe it's you know um, archived or something like that or maybe you track like who created it, something like that. 
But for now, the basics are here. You've got like a drop down for those. These are all little text fields. And so now with this table already built out, we go back into the interface and from here, all we need to do is set up the workflow to create the URL and put it in this table we see down below. Now this table pulls in from campaign URLs table, which is right here. Obviously there's nothing here yet. So when we go here, we don't see anything. And we added one filter. We put archive to false. When it is true, that's when this little checkbox is selected and then it will remove that URL. So this just makes it easier for someone on your team who's building it out. It can use that. All right, so what happens when someone fills out the form? That's what we wanna do. So in the form, we go to actions. The notification says generating one minute and then the zap will kick off. This is a trigger and here is the zap. We'll click in and take a look at it. All right, so the zap, it starts, let's zoom in here, with that submission from the form and then it does a bunch of formatting steps. These formatting steps are called URL encoding. This just makes sure whatever value comes in is in a format that's appropriate for a URL. UTM.io is doing this behind the scenes, but we need to do it here to ensure everything is set up and looks correct. So we'll go and click edit draft and you can see this is a formatter step. These are free within Zapier. And so when you have this run through, none of these will count as tasks. So you can add as many formatter steps as you want to manipulate data and make it formatted correctly, and it won't count against your task limit. That's huge. A lot of people don't know that. So the app is formatted by Zapier. The action event is text. And then configure, you'll do string URL in code. That is what, uh, let's see, I'll show you. There's all these different options, and one of them is to actually encode the URL. Here it is, see, URL encode. You input the value of the submitted form. You're gonna do this one by one for everything that's submitted in your form. This will output the URL version, if you will, of that piece, of that you know campaign source or whatever it might be. So you go through and you just create a formatter set for every field you want to include. Now, the last two steps here, you have short and link step, which is a app by Zapier called URL Shortener by Zapier. You could use this. You could keep the URL long, or you could even add in your own like Bitly account. So I'll just use URL Shortener by Zapier so you don't have to see me authenticate an account, but this is where you're actually building out the URL. So you would go here and you'd map the original URL from the form submission. So we'll find that website URL. And then you're gonna append all of the parameters. So like the first one is the source. So you go UTM underscore source equals, and then you'd map in from the source and then type and, and you'd go down the list here. I'll do it real quick. Okay, so now we have all of the parameters mapped in. If you wanted to add more, you would just include that here. Even if someone doesn't enter in one of these pieces, you can just still have the sort of the placeholders and just no data will throw in there and that should still work for the URL. So we click continue, we can click retest step and it'll shorten it. And then all you do is just make sure that the record in the table is up Dated with that new URL. You, you include the full campaign URL and then also the shortened one. So that looks good. Okay, so all we do now is publish this and let's give it a test live to see how easy it is. All right, here we go. We'll use Zapier, the campaign source. We'll say this is gonna be via email. The ID might be, we'll use some numbers there. Uh, campaign medium, the name, sure, spring sale, the term, and content, we'll put sure, A. So we click generate URL. This is gonna go to the Zap and generate it. We're all already gonna see it show up as a record in the table below. And as the Zap runs, which takes just a second, then you'll see the campaign URL and the shortened campaign URL pop up here. 
Okay, so we can see the campaign URL and the shortened URL show up here. When we click the shortened URL, it's gonna open it up and I can scroll down here so you can see the URL bar. We've got the source, the medium, the name, everything is included in this list. So after I've captured that URL, I can archive it from the list. And there you go. You've essentially created your own utm.io all within Zapier.